guys, it's Panda and I am back with a new video. Today I wanted to share with you all my favorite reads of 2014. Now I read a total of 39 books last year. I was one book short of my reading goal. But either way, I'm still so proud of myself and all of the books I read last year which were so freaking amazing that it was hard for me to narrow down this list so what I decided to do was split it into two parts um, obviously in one video first I'll be showing you my honorable mentions which are books that I loved all equally but for different reasons and then we'll go on to my top five books of 2014 also just to keep this video pretty short I don't want it to be very long I decided to list the books down below along with the Goodreads link so you can see a brief summary of them there instead of me having to explain it and and without further ado, let's just begin. So first off in my honorable mentions is And the Mountains Echoed by Khalid Husseini. I read this book and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. This is an adult fiction with a bunch of stories intertwining with each other and at first it may seem a little bit confusing, not even really confusing, but they all make sense in the end. I also read Khalid Hosseini's The Kite Runner last year, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I did and The Mountains Echoed. And with this book, you can definitely see some improvements. Um, this would have been a five-star read for me. I honestly knew that I would enjoy this book, but it had some faults and had some loose ends by the end of the book, which is why I had to give it four out of five stars. But either way, it's still an amazing novel that you should check out. Next up is The Age of Miracles by Karen Thompson Walker. This is a book I read towards the ending of the year and I was actually really surprised that I enjoyed this book because it has a lot of negative reviews on agrees from people that didn't like it because it wasn't truthful to, to, to the sci-fi-ness of it or it didn't really make sense um, but to me I really enjoyed it because it's sort of like a coming of age story and I really really enjoyed that and by the end of this book I just couldn't stop thinking about it and I was so happy that I actually picked it up and read it despite what people said and I'm not gonna lie it was a cover buy for me even though I had heard of it before but the cover was just so beautiful that I was like I have to read this I'm also gonna be reviewing this book really soon so make sure you look out for that next book is An Abundance of Catherine's by John Green and I know I know you probably don't like this book but I do. I gave this book, I think, I believe a 5 out of 5 stars. I have a feeling I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It's very short. And this is John Green's like least favorite books, um, least liked books, sorry, from people. But I actually really enjoyed this. I, I guess it was because I was in the mood for a road trip book and I didn't really care what would happen. And I ended up liking it and I ended up seeing the bigger picture of this book and enjoying it. I just loved the characters. Hassan was extremely funny, which... I was surprised that I was actually laughing out loud at like some passages in this book but it is such a fun read. The next book I got is A Young Adult's Contemporary and it is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. Now this I believe was published in 2014. Yeah, in 2014. I got it like a month after it was released. My sister surprised me with it as a gift and oh my god it was so cute and I really really liked this. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars or yeah I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars and I can't wait for the second book in the dual in this duology and it's coming out later on this year which is called P.S. I Still Love You or P.S. I Love You. I'm not sure. I also um, put up here the release date but do keep in mind the release date might change but that's the release date as of right now this video being published but oh my gosh i love this book so much it was such a light and fun contemporary read and the ending that cliffhanger I, I just i want more out of this story and the next book i've got is eleanor and park by rainbow Rowell. this is also another young adult contemporary and i haven't read any other rainbow Rowell book but oh my god this book was so sweet it was so beautiful and the music references in this book it just it broke my heart not necessarily the story itself i liked it but the music references especially the scene where they're driving in the car with the smith song playing there is a light that never goes out that was just a very smart rainbow Rowell. when i finished reading it at first i didn't like it that much just because of the hype that was surrounding it that by the end of this book i was expecting so much more i was ex expecting like a bang or something and though the ending is pretty good, I mean it's sad but it's bittersweet, that's what the ending is. Even though I was expecting so much more, 
it was still a good book and I had to reflect on it before I could realize that wow I actually really like this book and the book's actually really really good but next is also another young adult contemporary I'm actually surprised at how many young adult contemporary made it onto my list I randomly picked this up at a store because it was really cheap and I was like let me just read it I don't know I wasn't expecting to like it and that is The Summer of Skinny Dipping by Amanda Howells this book is fantastic. It's amazing. I loved it. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It broke my heart. I was in bed at 4 a.m. crying and bawling my eyes out because I couldn't believe what actually happened by the time I got to the end of this book. Now I have a review for this up so if you're interested just click the book right here and you'll be redirected to that and I'll leave a link to it in the description bar down below for those of you who are on your mobile devices. But this is such an underrated book and so many more people need to read this. Next up, I've got My Sister's Keeper by Jodie Picoult. This is an adult fiction, contemporary, not contemporary, but it's an adult fiction, that's all I can say. Having someone so close to you, having cancer, a sickness that's just so terrible. And this book just really, really portrayed how the family dealt with it and how they felt and also the cancer patient themselves. It was just so, so amazing. And I, having lost someone to cancer, my father could totally relate to this book and everything that Jodie Picoult was saying inside it. it man, I, I was crying at some certain parts just because of how accurate it described how the family felt. It's like someone you love, you're watching them suffer and you know that there's a high possibility that they might die and you can't do anything about it except take them to hospitals and stuff but you just wish you could do so much more or trade places with them and it was just it was written so so beautifully I'm definitely going to be rereading this book again the next two books are uh, a part of a trilogy and it is Catching Fire which is the second book and Mockingjay which is the third this whole trilogy was really good I read all of these last year and I really really enjoyed them I was surprised that I actually did like it it was very fast paced and despite what everyone else says I actually liked the ending. I, I really, really did. And the last book that is on my honorable mentions is To Beard Head's Broken Hearts by Robin Schneider, also known as The Beginning of Everything. This is a book I read at the beginning of the year. I don't have a physical copy of it, unfortunately, because I had borrowed it from a friend. It was so good, guys. If you ever have the chance to read that, read it. And it's a young adult contemporary. No surprise there. Now, you guys, on to the real deal. My top five favorite books of 2014. Coming in at number five is The 39 Deaths of Adam Strand by Gregory Galloway. It was really, really good. I gave it a five out of five stars. It so accurately depicts suicide and depression, and I've never read it. I've never read a book that so accurately depicted it in a book before. I already have a review for this up, so if you're interested, just click here on the book. I'll also leave a link to the description bar down below for those of you who are on your mobile devices but I was again once again surprised by this book because I wasn't really expecting to like it I thought I'd be like hmm, okay with it but I didn't even end up liking it I ended up loving it coming in at number four is The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter this is the first book in the Raven Cycle series and oh my gosh I can't believe this book I gave this a four out of five stars okay the reason why, I would have given this a 5 out of 5 stars, but Maggie Steve Otter kind of writes about really boring things. Like, I really like world building and just observing the things that are around, but she kind of overdoes it, so that's why I had to give it a 4 out of 5 stars. But either way, this book is amazing, and I'm never usually like hooked on a book series, like a young adult series. I'm not into that. But this is definitely one that I want to continue. I know everyone loves Gansy, but I am team... Ronan and I can't wait to read The Dream Thieves because Ronan Bay, it's all about him. Coming in at number three, which is possibly my favorite, like top favorite YA series that's out at the moment. It's actually the first book in the trilogy and it is Half Bad by Sally Green. <sighs> it is so good and just look at this cover. It's so pretty. I never thought that I'd actually like a book about witches, especially one that has bad witches and good witches, otherwise known as black witches and white witches in this book, but oh my gosh, this book totally blew my mind. Not because of the whole witch thing that was going on, but because of Nathan Byrne as a character, I just really, really loved him and I've never read about a character like him before in any YA novel that I've ever read. 
and one thing I really loved about this main book is it's mostly centered on character development and world building so by the second book it's all gonna be about the fights and stuff and I love the little love thing at the end I'm not gonna spoil it for you like who it's in between but who it's between but oh my god I want to read more of it half wild is gonna be coming out this year I'm not exactly sure when but again I'll annotate it in the screen so yeah this is definitely a book you should check out you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it that's just how it is and I'm one of the people that actually ended up loving it we're closing in guys we're closing in coming in at number two is a book that it was hard for me to put in number two it was so close to being number one until I read the other book that will be taking the number one spot but it is Lost Bodies by Francois Gantre or Gantret I'm sorry I can't really pronounce his name this book is spectacular it's haunting it's filled with amazing prose it's centered on two characters in a time of political repression but I'm gonna have a review for this book up really soon where I just want to go in depth about it just because it's so amazing and it's just a short book it was this close to becoming my favorite book of the year but it comes in at a close number two and it's definitely something that you should check out if you want to venture into some literary fiction or adult fiction this is one book that you should go for because it's really easy and it's really short now guys I'm so excited to show you my number one book of 2014 I wasn't expecting it to be a YA book let alone this one just because I've been holding off on this book for so long it had been sitting on my shelf for over a year nearly two years okay and I never wanted to pick this book up I did twice but then when I read it I got a note of the main character I was like 50 pages in and I was like nah and the third time I picked it up which was last year because it started hyping up again on booktube and so I was like let me just give it a shot and I'm so happy I did it is ready player one by Ernest Cline what surprised me the most about this book is the fact that it's a sci-fi and I'm not someone who reads sci-fi. I'm either young adult contemporary or adult fiction. That's just what I stick to and I read it in two sittings. Like that's how good this book is. It was fantastic. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. Definitely, definitely my favorite book and most memorable one of 2014. This book was so good that I just had to go and tell my sister the story and read the like the last five pages to her. And even she was like doing her makeup and she looked at me like, oh my god. Because <gasps> that's how good it is. Ernest Cline's second novel is going to be coming out later on this year titled Armada. It's also going to be a sci-fi centered about video games. And I am so, so excited. Ernest Cline has an amazing writing style. He has amazing world building. And the way he writes his characters are just on point. So I'm definitely looking forward to Armada. I'm probably going to buy it as soon as it hits the shelves. Like, I'm not even kidding you. I've never been this excited for a book as I am with Armada because of how good Ready Player One is. So that concludes this video. Those are my favorite reads of 2014. Let me know in the comment section down below what are your top five reads of 2014. Or just let me know what are your reading goals for 2015. My reading goal is to read 50 books, hopefully more. I think I'm on like my fourth or fifth book at the moment. I'm just excited excited to see what this new year is gonna bring just see how my channel itself also is gonna go and develop into now i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you in my next one bye